Hi everyone, Sam is here. Uh, today's subject is about uh, coronavirus uh, precautions. Uh, before we go into details, I would like just to differentiate between bacteria and virus because most of us, we get confused between both uh, diseases. Bacteria, it's microorganism. We can deal with it and kill it by taking antibiotics. Viruses are different genetically. Viruses, they have the ability to mutate themselves. They transform their shape. That's why we don't have the ability to kill them by any medication. So far, there is no pharmaceutical company is able to produce a medication against the virus. Uh, an example for that, flu, influenza virus. We don't have any medication for it. When we get afflicted by influenza, we stay home, we rest uh, until the lifespan of the virus is over and we go back again to normal. But if we're speaking about something killer like coronavirus, we have to take some uh, serious precautions because this is more fatal than the influenza. Coronavirus, it's extension to another virus. We had it before. If you remember 2002 uh, until end of 2003, uh, we had the SARS, which came also from China. SARS, uh, it has the same symptoms as Corona. Uh, it, afflict, it, it targets the respiratory system. And the name Corona comes from the shape of the virus. If you look at the virus under, under the electronic microscope, it looks like a crown. From here, it comes the name coronavirus. Uh, as we mentioned that uh, uh, the, the virus mutate itself. So that's why we have uh, difficulty to deal with it and kill it by medication. But on the other hand, our immune system is able to deal with it by producing antibodies. When we get attacked by the virus, the virus, as I told you, it needs a host to be able to reproduce and live. So it gets attached to our, the membrane of our cells. When, and they use our enzymes for reproduction. When this process happens, the immune system gets alert and starts to produce antibodies to defend you. So and that means that we need our system to be in a good condition, to be strong enough to be able to defend us and to produce antibodies to defend us. When the process of uh, producing antibodies by the immune system happens, the body temperature increases. And that's a good sign. When the body temperature increases, it means that the immune system is working properly. The body temperature increases and against that, the function of the virus goes down. So it's a good sign that we have a high temperature when we get sick by virus. It means that our system work is working properly. How we can strengthen our immune system to be able to defend us 100%? We need to do some steps by doing a lot of stuff and not doing a lot of stuff as follow number one <clears throat> basically we need to follow the instructions of the government like they advise us by isolation get isolated at, at home don't go outside uh, just in case if you need to go outside for necessity only number two wash your hands washing hands by water and soap is enough this is what i see it in my opinion why because people when they get panic and they buy sanitizer and they use the sanitizer a lot sanitizers they don't kill virus as we mentioned before virus we we don't have any product to kill it you kill the bacteria when you use the sanitizer you strip off the bacteria of your skin and the bacteria one of the front line defense so you need to keep the bacteria on your skin. The bacteria lives with us on our skin, in our body, in the colon, in the intestine, in the mouth, everywhere in our body. According to Dr. William Lee, when he does, when he did his uh, research for uh, the microbiome, he wanted to make a research to see how the bacteria lives with us and how it enhances our health. He found that number of 
uh, human body cells is 30 trillion human body cells. And on the other hand, he found the same number, equal number for the bacteria which lived with, with us in our body, 30 trillion bacteria cells. So we are equal with the bacteria. So we are half human, half bacteria. So when we think about health-wise medication, food, we need to think about the bacteria as well. So let's go to the point. What we need to do after washing hands and not overdo the sanitizer. You can use the sanitizer in a very limited uh, range, but not overdo it just to keep the bacteria on your skin as a uh, defense line. <clears throat> food. We need to stop eating sugar. Why? Because sugar eleva ele elevate the inflammation level in your body. And when your inflammation level gets higher in your body, your immune system is busy to defend you against the inflammation. And that's what we don't want now. We, we need our immune system to focus 100% to defend us against the virus. So we need to stop eating sugar just to avoid the inflammation. Number two, we need to stop eating grains. Grains like wheat, barley, corn, etc., etc., etc. All the, the grains, they are complex carbohydrates. When we consume complex carbohydrates, our body will convert it into sugar. And we get the same result as inflammation as we eat direct sugar. Not only that. Grains, they contain two bad elements, lectin and gluten. Lectin and gluten are poison. When we consume them, there is something bad happens to our immune system. Immune system disorder. So instead of direct your immune system in the right, in the right position, you redirect it in the wrong position. And instead of defending you, it will attack you. So immune system disorder caused by lectin and gluten from grains. So that's why we need to stop eating grains just to reduce the inflammation in our body and to avoid the immune system disorder. Supplements. We need to consume vitamin D3. Usually vitamin D3, it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone produced by the body when we expose ourselves to the sun. But in Canada, we are not lucky enough, we don't have enough sun. That's why we need to take it as a supplement. The dosage of the vitamin D3, it should be 10,000 international unit. 10,000 international unit, vitamin D3. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is very essential for the immune system, to strengthen the immune system. What's the dosage that we need? We need 2,000 milligrams a day. Vitamin C is very sensitive against light and heat. That's why when we buy it, we keep it in a cold place and well closed because we don't need to expose it to the light because it's very sensitive, as I mentioned. And because it's sensitive, if we took the 2,000 milligram one shot, we will not benefit as much as we need. So we need to divide it into two halves, 1,000 milligram at the morning time and another 1,000 mil, 1, milligram at evening. <clears throat> magnesium. Magnesium is essential to replenish the bacteria which lives in the colon because these bacteria, when they are well fed, you feed them like a pet, and you give them the right food, the right uh, uh, vitamins and minerals, they produce chemicals. These chemicals, it will go in the bloodstream and enhance and strengthen your immune system. So magnesium, it's one of these uh, nourishment that you need to feed your bacteria with. What's the dosage? 420 milligrams a day. Mushrooms. Mushrooms are antioxidant, antifungus, antibacteria. And also they contain cellulose, they contain fibers. We are not able to digest the fibers in the mushroom 100%. And there will be some residues of these fibers. It will, it will remain in the colon. And the bacteria which lives in the colon, it will consume it and eat these fibers and produce more chemicals, the good chemicals that we need to enhance and strengthen the immune system. 
but because we are not able to eat big amounts of mushrooms in one meal what we need to do we need to have supplements so we buy from the pharmacy as supplements capsules or tablet tablets of mushroom one last thing fasting i think all of us or most of us we heard lately about the new trend of weight loss the intermittent fasting intermittent fasting actually is not only for weight loss but also to strengthen and enhance the immune system why because when you fast you give your body a vacation a day off you tell your body don't work take a day off and take rest during this fasting the body makes a process it's called autophagy what does it mean autophagy the body will wipe out like it, it, all the dead cells and renew and rebuild the new cells so you have new younger cells in your body this process it will strengthen and enhance the immune system because you have new cells you have younger cells living inside you not only that because we need source of fuel all the time but you are fasting there is no energy coming in so your body will use the restored accumulated fat as source of fuel so that that's why they use the intermittent fasting to lose weight because the body will use the fat accumulated fat as a source of fuel during this process of converting the fat into fuel there is a process happens in the body it's called ketosis the body produces ketones the ketones this is the fuel that your body uh, burn as source of energy these ketones it will enhance the met mental health and the immune system as well one last thing if you have a chance to expose yourself to the sunshine at least 20 minutes a day do it i know in canada we are not lucky enough we don't have enough sun but just in case if you have a chance to expose yourself to the sun that's a good idea to uh, urge your body to produce vitamin d3 thank you for watching see you in my next video